So I'm a happy guy. I've got two things going on right now that I think really speak to the essence of what this channel is all about, which is working with, for, about the little guy, the guy who's just getting started. And I've said this before, right? When it comes to automotive industry, automotive material, videos, magazines, all of that stuff, it always tends to focus on the people who have the most resources. And it makes sense because it's all advertising driven. So advertisers don't make money if you don't buy parts. So everything is to sell, sell, sell. And this, it's always been like this. It's been like this from the very beginning of, of the hot rod, the car thing. But the way I've always looked at it is that you've got about 25% of the car population that has the money, the experience, the facilities, tools, ambition, right? Uh, you got about 25% of the automotive population that really has it all. And then you've got the other 75%. And the other 75%, they struggle, they scrimp, they save, they plan. You know, it, it's, it's hard, right? It's hard. But they make up the majority, and those are the people who we do this channel for. We try to make things as simple for them as possible. We try to enlighten them on the things that more experienced people know without getting so overcomplicated as to lose them. I mean, that literally, that is the essence of this channel, and that's everything that we do revolves around that premise. It's getting the most from the least, right, so that anybody can do this. And then we try to keep it as broad as possible so that 25% we don't lose them either. We, you know, we try to do some stuff for them also. But, but for the most part, the idea is to is to raise up the the, the guys who are really working, struggling, learning. You know, it's not an easy thing. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would do it. We try to give encouragement and inspiration to those people to make them keep moving forward and, and get it done. So, like I says, I've got the two things currently that. I'm excited about that. One of them is, is very short term, it's just happening right now, and another one is more long term. So let's talk about that first. So I got a friend of mine, David Vizard. So if you've been around for any amount of time, you know the name. David, when I tell you he's the guy who wrote the book, I mean quite literally he wrote the books. Most of the books that guys my generation and, and a little bit younger read growing up to learn about engines, to learn about performance, to learn about... David's the guy who actually wrote those things. And I'm fortunate enough to count him as one of my friends. Now, David also has a YouTube channel. He has two YouTube channels. One of them is dormant now. It was David Vizard Performance. So he's done with that. The, the gentleman that he was partnered with on that channel unfortunately passed away a couple of months ago, unexpectedly. So David has had to restart, and his channel is just David Vizard. So go over there and sub. If you're a gearhead, if you're trying to absorb this stuff, David is, is an ultimate goldmine. He's, he's not even a national treasure, he's a global treasure, right? So and I'm not saying that because he's my friend. I'm telling you the, the God's honest truth. Anybody who's ever, who's familiar with him and his history and everything that he's done, uh, they say the same thing. The guy is just amazing. Wealth of information. So David Vizard, that's his channel. So last night, I'm doing a live. We did a, 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 went on for three hours. We did a live feed with David and Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. Andy and David worked together. So during the course of this live, I mentioned, we were talking mostly about camshafts and stuff like that. And during the course of this live, I mentioned to David about this 318 that I want to build. Uh, and here's the layout of this 318. And remember, we talk about uh, we're talking about educating people about getting the most from the least, right? How to get the most from the least. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to go hunt exotic parts. How to get the most of the least? And in the world of Chrysler products, the 318 um, take the slant six out of the side, uh, you know, aside. The 318 is the least. It's the bread and butter engine. It, it never had any performance. Um, any any type of performance persona during the course of its run until it became a Magnum. So we're talking about the LA motor. 
So from 1967 until 1991, 1990, whatever the last year it was, it was never a performance center. The vast majority of them were two barrel, the vast, vast, vast majority with two barrel, low compression, bread and butter engines. It was the base engine that they put in just, you know, any old passenger car, taxi cab, police cars, fleet cars, light trucks. It's not a performance engine. The 340, which is which is a performance refinement of the 318, was absolutely was only a performance engine. And then you get the 360, but we're going to talk about that. So I explained to David, he says, what I want to do with this 318 is I want to throw every single trick in the book. Everything that you could think of to make horsepower, to free up horsepower from a stock package. Now here's this is this is the one we're going to use right here. I says I want to take every trick there is and I want to throw it at this engine, and I want to see what we can make out of it. It's just using stock parts or just stock replacement parts, you know, stuff you get from Rock Auto. So we're talking about stock replacement pistons, camshaft, um, heads, valves, springs, all of that, and a stock intake manifold and a stock two-barrel carburetor. Because like I said, the vast majority of these things were two-barrel carburetors. They used BBDs that were rated at like 285 CFM. So David's listening as I'm explaining this. And I says, I think, I think in a perfect world done with everything done just right on this engine using nothing but stock parts, I think we can get around 270, between like 275 and 290 horsepower out of it. So David pauses for a minute and he says, uh, I think we can get more than that. I says, really? He says, yeah, I think we can get like 320, 330 horsepower out of it. Now, mind you, this is, for a com this is a completely stock engine just with the, with the factory parts massaged, ground on, blueprinted, every little detail covered. He thinks 320, 320. So I says, David, I says, you want to work on this something? And he's like, definitely. He's, and he sparked up. He was like, this could be a lot of fun. This could be a great project. So that's what we're going to do. I was going to build this thing myself, but now we're going to let David take the lead on this. I'm going to let him tell me what parts we're, we're going to need and how we're going to, well, obviously they're going to be stock parts, but how they, he wants them prepped ahead of time. And then we're going to run it out there to North Carolina, to David's place, and we'll do the the, the actual nitty gritty. And Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage is gonna get involved too. Andy is like a carburetor guru. He's gonna work on that on the, the BBD that we're gonna supply. And I think we're gonna try a Rochester two barrel also because for a couple of applications, the Rochester, the General Motors Rochester two barrel was also an option or, or, or fitted to factory 318s. When I know there were 318 four barrels at the thermo quad. I get that, I know. No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna focus on the bread and butter go to any junkyard, buy one or, or the back of a Mopar guy's shed, buy one of these motors for nothing, you know, 25 bucks, 50 bucks, or just get this thing out of my yard, right? That's the combination that we're going to work with. And the goal is going to be to get one horsepower per cubic inch. So 318 cubic inch. Well, actually, we're probably, we're probably overboard of the thing, obviously. Stock replacement pistons, but a, a larger size. Um, 323, 325 cubic inches. Let's see if we can get 325 cubic inches out of a stone stock 318. I think that's an interesting. So I'll, I'll bring it more up to speed with that as, as it moves forward. Because like I said, this materialized last night as we were doing a live. And I think it's great. Go over and please go sub to David Vizard's channel. So, that's the one thing that's going on. Here's the other thing that's going on. And like I said, a big part of this channel is to help motivate and inspire people to show them they can do it, right? Not teach them how to do it. Because, you, you know, you, that's, that's like the, the big problem with a lot of this stuff. They'll be like, okay, this is how you rebuild the power steering pump, or this is how you rebuild a, a transmission, or it, that only fits for that one specific application. So if I show you how to build a rebuild a Ford power steering pump, you're only learning about rebuilding a Ford power steering pump because it's very specific. It's more that's more that's more of a tutorial. 
I like to focus more on the bigger picture. So rebuilding or servicing any particular part of a car, I, I stay away from the nitty gritty details and focus more on the bigger picture. So this way, no matter what the viewer is working on, if we're talking about doing a transmission now, and that's what we're doing here, no matter what the viewer is working on, it could be a, it could be a, a K5 Blazer or a, or a Toyota Camry or a, a, a 69 Mustang, it doesn't make a difference what it is. They'll get something from it. They'll get something from it. We only really talk about like tips, tricks, that sort of stuff when it's very broad. Right? Or, or it can be applied to any other thing. So that's why, we, that's why we don't do Mopar specific things. We try to stay away from Mopar specific things. We use Mopars to illustrate stuff that we're doing because we're, I'm a Mopar guy and I'm surrounded by Mopar things. So, but the videos we do, we try to make these things so they can apply across the board. Now, and again, see that's what we're doing with our, with our experimental 318. We're using a 318, but it could just as well be, I mean, pick an engine that nobody has any regard for, right? You know, a 307 Chevy, for example, right? A 304 AMC or, or a, any engine, because these principles can be applied across the board to any engine. So, as I said, the idea here, the main, the main goal of this channel is to inspire people and get them to actually go out and turn wrenches. So that's what we got going on with Josh and his satellite. I know, it was supposed to be out by now. The train was supposed to be out by now and today we were supposed to be going through the front of the transmission. It's taken a little bit longer than he thought. Now, the idea here isn't for me to help him do the transmission. The, I, I'm here to guide and assist when he needs it. But he's fighting through this thing on his own. He's, a, he's an IT tech guy. He doesn't do cars. He's always wanted to do cars. This is his first car project. This is the first car big job he's ever done on it. And uh, how is it going so far? Well, like you said, it's taken a little longer than we expected. Um, so this car originally was a 318 AC car. Um, it's got a 440 with headers. Um, and it has proven challenging at each step did i say more? <laughs> <laughs> at each step of the of uh each step of the way um so the so the most recent so we've got the starter is disconnected we've got the headers disconnected we've got the drive shaft out i'm starting on um the transmission cross member trying to get those bolts out and of course this car the underneath is if it if it's either loctited or it's rusted loctite well, you've uh, had to call me in twice. I have. And yeah. what were those things? So the first, well, one of them was the flange that connects the header to the exhaust, uh, the exhaust that runs to the rear of the car. It was, I couldn't get it off. I was ready to just take a, take a saw to it, and just cut the pipe off and just get it out of the way. Um, the top bolt. So there's three yeah. bolts on the, the yeah. so just to explain to anybody who's watching, there's three bolts on the collector flange mm -hmm. and the bolt in the top in the center, the most difficult one to get to, was either cross-threaded or just like, it, it was, it was it, we had to break it. We couldn't really get in there with a sawzall or a cutoff wheel to get it clean. Yes. And it's right up against the floor of the car, so like a, a cutting it with a torch isn't, isn't really an option. So we ended up having to snap it. And it was easier said than done just because of the angles involved. Yep. So, but that, that took you a while. How, how, how much time did you burn down on that? Whew. I would say just the this this whole side, just trying to get to the starter. Um, I mean, that probably burned four four or five hours just trying to get down into this to be able to get to get this out of the way enough that I could get to the starter. Um, which um, we had to I had to jack up the motor. So this second, uh, this bolt that's right here, I actually had to jack up the motor um, to get this one out because it was captive behind this first tube. Right. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just been challenging at every step, so. And then the, uh, you had one bolt on the, uh, on the drive shaft that was. Yeah, so <laughs> as, as per usual, so there's four bolts that, that connect the drive shaft to the rear end um well that they keep it in place i got three off and the fourth one i basically rounded off with a flat wrench trying to get it off um and so of course tony comes and saves the day and he 
does his Tony magic and he gets the bolt out as he does. That's what I do. <laughs> so that he is here to be my my Mr. Miyagi. So that's it. I'm not here to I'm not here yeah. to actually help him with the job. He's doing this on his own. I'm only here for when he like like I'm. You know, when you run into a problem, you go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. right? He's my YouTube. I'm today. YouTube. Right. I'm being your yeah. YouTube right now. Yeah. I'm being it live. So it's taking a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, we, like I guess I was hoping to have the transmission out today and have it on the bench. It may take another couple of days before it's all done. He does have a family. He's, he's, got, he's got a four month old baby that he's got to take care of also. So this may, this may go on a little bit longer than, than we originally anticipated, but it's a great learning experience for him. And if you're watching this at home, this, is, this should be inspiration. Because here's a guy, he's not a mechanic. He has no experience. This is his first thing that he's working on, and he's taking on a monster of a job. He's pulling a transmission out of this thing, and he's gonna, we're going to rebuild it. So there you go. If, if you have any doubts, if you're watching this, and you're like, oh, I really want to work on my car, I really want to get out there and do it, there you go. Here's it's happening right in front of your eyes. So, for that person who wants to work on their car, who wants to, but has that 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Um, hesitation. Yeah. Um, just the one. I'll give you a couple pieces of, pieces of advice. Uh, the first is do your research. Figure out what you're buying before you buy it. Yes. Um, I have learned over the last couple of days with Tony, just digging into the car, this is a bit of a Frankenstein. It's got a little bit of everything going on, which is what's made it so difficult. Um, and then second, there's no better way to learn than to just go out and do. Um, like the first thing I did on the car was brakes. Right? I, I mean, it's easy. They're just drum brakes. There's just a bunch of springs and shoes. Right. Um, and uh, just just go out and do it. It's the easiest way to learn. And, I mean, there is a chance that you could break something if you're, you know. Mess you're going to break stuff. Yeah, you're going to break stuff. Break stuff. It's just, we had to break that bolt to get yeah, it off. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and especially if you're not the first owner, you have no idea. If you don't have any paperwork, you have no idea what has gone on with this car. Very true. <laughs> or how many different hands. Yeah, exactly. Right? How many different people. How just... many cases of light beer went into the construction of this particular car? <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times I've come across that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, really, that's that's, just, that's the biggest thing is is just give yourself some grace. Because I know after, after Thursday, my first day out here, and it was just everything was a challenge. You were ready to pack it in. I was, I was. I was ready. I was ready to pack it in. Like, look, this, you know, this may be a little bit bigger, bigger of a job than what I'm was willing to invest. Um, but Tony does his, did his uh, Mr. Miyagi Kimosabi. You know, I, I got you fired yeah, up again. Right? He got me fired back up to work on it some more. And so here I am. Came back out. Here so here. you've been here for about five hours now so far, mm -hmm. and you've been dealing with some pretty miserable stuff. Yep. How do you feel about it? I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now because we've gotten through some of the biggest hurdles, which is, which was really just this driver's side, the header, the starter, getting all that. The bolts, I mean, again, I was ready to just cut all the stuff out, but Tony did what Tony does, get, got them out. Um, but honestly, I'm ready, I'm ready to see it, to see it taken out, you know, get my hands dirty, pull the valve body out, get all the stuff out, go through my kit that I bought, and put everything back in. And I'm just ready to see it back on the road. Right. So. And no rush. Yep. No rush. You work at your own pace and, and learn and hone those skills, man. Hold yep. But the most important thing, see, the, the most important thing is that once you conquer a couple of those hurdles where you look at something you're like, oh, my God, I, this can't be done, right? Or this is, this is just terrible. Once you conquer a couple of those hurdles, you start to build that confidence. You know what I mean? And, and as that confidence builds, you attack a little harder and a little harder. And you're going to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. He's making mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Just, just allow yourself to make those mistakes. It's, it's that simple. Just tell yourself, hey, I'm going to screw this up. And then just go right ahead and do it. And go ahead and screw it up. And you will figure out how to straighten it out afterwards. And it's just the way it is. That's how you learn. You never would have learned how to walk if you didn't get tired of falling over in your crib. 
right? I mean, it's that simple. That's how it works. So, but he's at it, and over the next couple of days, we'll we'll be ready to. Uh, probably not. Sometime this week, we'll have the transmission out on the bench, and we'll go through the step by step. Not not so much the step by step, but the overview of how to freshen a transmission. So that's it, guys. I hope you got something out of that. And uh, more, uh, definitely more on the 318. I think we're going to do, going to do a, a 318 overview just to, to kick that off. Now, it's another project that's not going to happen in the blink of an eye. David is a very busy, very occupied guy. So is Andy, for that matter. And he's, he, you know, he's, an, he's an older gentleman. He doesn't move quite as fast as he used to. So this 318 build may take a little longer than usual. But there'll be golden nuggets in between to keep you going right so that's it please go over there and sub to david's channel as well as andy's unity motorsports garage that's it guys i'm going to leave him alone so he can keep going with that and uh i'll see you tomorrow